I'm Derek Alberts. My name is Benita Levine. My name is Lewahang Mwegezi. My name is Mandy Wiener, and we want you to help in the fight against corrective rape. He was saying, yes, I pro now I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I wanted to prove you that you are a woman, not a man. Nokutula is a Sowetan born and bred and has lived there her whole life. But because of her status as a proud lesbian woman, she was forced to endure a crime that affects one in ten black lesbians across South Africa. It's happened in 1997. I was 17 years old. I was coming from church and I remember it was Friday and the chair, we just knock off late and then around eight. Then I just walk on my way to home. Then there was a guy who was calling me by my name because I thought it's someone I know. And then I just a little bit slowed down so that he must catch up. Then I didn't know that this was going to be a bad night that day, a pain that I will never forget in my life. It's been described as an attack on a person's identity, sexual orientation, or even for simply failing to conform to gender norms. Corrective rape um, usually refers to the rape of a lesbian woman. Um, more often than not, they're black. And then the idea is that uh, by having sex with a man, that it's so good that she sees what she's missing, and that would cure her of being lesbian. So therefore the concept correct of rape. So it corrects her from being a lesbian to a heterosexual. But even though corrective rape may be rife in township communities, some experts suggest that changing the law around this type of rape could complicate proceedings in court. Depending on what purpose you see the creation of a category of something called hate crime would serve. Um, very often as soon as people see what they really like is a hate crime to affect sentence. But you don't need to draft legislation to do that. All you would need to do is perhaps put in an amendment that says if you can see a crime was motivated on particular grounds, it should be eligible for the maximum sentence. And I mean, there again, you just need a motivated state prosecutor to make the argument. You don't even need to wait for a law um, reform process. You can do it through a process of precedent. So it really depends on what it is that you want to achieve. Because I must say, rape of lesbians is, is rape. It's not a separate sort of rape, it is rape. And it's, much of it is motivated by very similar grounds. I mean, it's, it's not a different crime, it doesn't require different kinds of evidence. But the minute you start calling it a hate crime, then you do start needing different sorts of evidence. And then you need to think about hate crimes broadly, because you may want to think about what about xenophobic crimes? Those two could fit categories of hate crime. So you would need to think quite carefully about what it is you want to accomplish. Meanwhile, even the term corrective rape remains contentious. Some organizations believe it creates a hierarchy of rape. I mean, I think in, in, in what, it's, what that term seeks to do is create a special category um, of rape. And yet we know that all rape shares the same kinds of elements. It's always about power and control. And so in some ways, all rape is correct, is an attempt to correct behavior, whether it is um, because a woman has denied um, a man's advances or rejected his advances, if it's because um, you know, she's seen to be above her station, if she's seen to um, you know, be dressing in a, a way that doesn't c kind of conform to how women are supposed to dress or she's behaving in a way that isn't seen to conform. It, in some ways it's all ha it all has elements of correction. Um, and I think there's a, there's a real danger that when we use this term corrective rape, um, that for a particular kind of rape or rape targeting a particular group of people, actually what we're doing is we're pulling it out and exceptionalizing it, um, which, which is problematic on a number of levels, both in terms of how we think about rape and sexual violence, but also then in terms of what it means and how we address rape and how we respond to it. But regardless of the term used to describe it, the fight against such crimes must continue. It's the pain that I will never forget and it's the pain that I will go down to the drift till I die with it.